Hi class, today we're going to be talking about hominids to hominins. Let's first talk about our essential questions. What are the functions of hominoids and hominins? How can hominoid evolution be traced from proconsul to homo? And what are the similarities between the various Australopithecine species? Let's review our vocabulary. We have the term savanna as a review word. If you recall, this is a grassy plain without any trees. The new words that we're going to have is hominoid, bipedal, and australopithecine. All right, what is a hominoid? A hominoid is a non-monkey arthropoid. This is going to include the humans, the chimpanzees, the orangutans, the gorillas, and the gibbons. All living ones, all extinct ones. Uh, we're going to see the arrival of the first hominoids about 25 million years ago. Um, they're going to have a lot of the same uh, characteristics that we talked about in the last class period for primates. They're going to have the large brain sizes relative to their body, the free moving hips and shoulders, and they're going to be adapted for brachiolation. Uh, you may ask, what is brachiolation? This is the ability to swing from branches and vines. If we take a look at this figure here, it's going to show us the different um, the relationship between different species. You see here we have humans, chimpanzees, bonobos, gorillas, and orangutans. These are going to be our hominoids. If you look here, we have baboons and macaws. That is our old world monkeys. We're going to have our new world monkeys down here, the squirrel monkeys, and old world primates. Those came about a long time ago. I, and you can see here we don't see the hominids coming in until actually around 23 million years ago. This has been comprised uh, from fossil dating and biochemical data to show the relationships between the two of them. Uh, when you have the branching like this, we see that the chimpanzees and the bonobos are actually the closest related of any of these that are on here. Again, we talked about the characteristics of hominoids when we talked about primates. They're the largest, though, of the primates. They have the largest brain sizes relative to their body size. Uh, they have broad pelvises, uh, long fingers, no tail, flexible hips and joints, and a semi-upright or an upright posture. We can see here with the humans, uh, humans and gibbons have an upright posture, and orangutans, chimpanzees, and gorillas have a semi-upright position. One thing we didn't talk about with primates are the molars. Uh, hominoids have distinctive molars. These are going to be the teeth in the back of your mouth. Uh, they're really good for mashing things. Um, someone asked the question in class today, what was our earliest ancestor or the common ancestor that we have with apes? The answer to that was proconsul. This is going to be the one that's going to show us the branching off from uh, apes into humans. Uh, it was discovered in 1948. It was shown to be the hominoid with the smallest brain, uh, which tells you that it's most likely one of the first. So looking at the lineage of where apes and humans split off, uh, we can look here and see that we have chimpanzees. This is a chimpanzee. And this is a hominid, most likely a human hominin. Uh, and you can see the differences between them. We have the curved uh, spine here. Humans have an S-shaped spine. And you can see the arms are not as long as the legs, whereas the arms are longer than the legs and the chimpanzees. Although there's all these differences between them, the chimpanzee is the most closely related uh, to humans. Okay, so let's talk about hominins. Okay, so we had hominoids. That's going to include the apes and the gibbons and all of that. Hominins, if you recall from primate, the primate lecture, it only includes homo sapiens. Humans are the only living hominins at this point. So hominins are bipedal, which means we walk on two lengths, legs strictly, and we're going to have much more complex brains, smaller teeth, thinner faces, and a higher level of dexterity. There's some distinct advantages and disadvantages to being bipedal. For us as humans, we don't see the disadvantages as much as 
our earlier hominin ancestors probably did. So the advantages we have is we don't use as much energy to walk as the ones that walk on four legs. Uh, we can stand up taller so we can see food, food sources. And we have ability to adapt to our environment much better. However, disadvantages of that cannot run very fast. Those that are on four legs do run much faster. And predators can see you because while you're standing tall, you're out of the grass and everyone can see you. Also, all of the weight is pushing down on your back and your hips. So it puts a lot of strain on that. All right, let's talk about the hominin fossils that we found. I, we're going to first talk about the different Australopithecines. Uh, they appeared 4.2 to 1 million years ago. They're going to be very small. They're going to have ape-like jaws and facial structures and ape-like brains. But they're going to have human-like teeth and limbs and joints. Uh, the first one that we look at is uh, Australopithecus africanus. This is also known as the Tungi child. It's one of the first discoveries, the tiny little thing. Um, and then there's Lucy. Lucy, this is probably the one that you've heard the most about. Uh, about 2.9 million years ago, uh, she's part of Australopithecus africanus. Um, she has a very complete uh, fossil structure, and they were able to reconstruct her features from there. As you can see from the picture, she is still quite ape-like and have not fully turned towards the Homo uh, genus. Um, she, if we're looking at Lucy, she had a lot of traits that were both ape-like and traits that were both human-like. Uh, so we can see here the human hip bones and the chimpanzee hip bones, and then you can see Lucy's are somewhere in between that. Also the human skull, the chimpanzee skull, and then Lucy's is somewhere in between that. Here you can see the full structure. Um, like I said, it's one of the most complete skeletons from that time that we have. All right, so what were the features of hominoids and hominins? Again, very much like the features we were talking about with primates, no tails, um, large brain sizes. Uh, the hominins are going to be bipedal. Um, we've traced the evolution of proconsul to homo, and we've shown some similarities between the australopithecine species. Thank you for watching. Now you need to go here to this website, take this quiz, take it once. If I see your name on there twice, I'm just going to delete them both. Take it once. You know you have a chance to retake it for full points if you don't do well on it. Okay, good luck guys and I'll see you at the next class.